the purple and I do the, the whoosh, whoosh, the whoosh, the whoosh, and the whoosh. So nothing's new there, guys. Now the new stuff is. Hi, hello. What's going Welcome on? To... Oops, one more time, one more time. <laughs> I was trying to throw you off. <laughs> Welcome to part 1C, guys. Uh, if you came from 1B, hello, thanks for joining us. Make sure you watch part 1A, 1B before watching this video so it makes sense. They're super fun. They're not as fun as this video, though. So you gotta finish this video, too. Ooh. Yeah. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching and please help considering, please help considering, please help, please, please help, please consider helping us as a patron on Patreon. There you go. You can help support this podcast series and us by buying us a boba or a soda, depending on who you want to help support, who you like more. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you team Jason right. or your team Frank? Mm -hmm. You better pick the yeah. right one. Yeah, and in this video, 1C, ignore the ignore the uh, the template. It's gonna say 1B, but it's actually 1C. Yeah, 1B was too long, so we have to make it two parts. Yeah, and also, and then in part D, what's coming up, Jason? What do they have to watch after this video? Uh, we have the cyclical pie systems. <laughs> yeah, they're over there. Go, go go check it out for 1D. Right there, go, go check them out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, enjoy the video, guys. See you in a sec. So that was diazomethane, and next, we have a really cool molecule that looks simple, but it's actually, uh, it's a little complicated. This one's not mm -hmm. super complicated. Okay. Phthalene's unique in the fact that what we've seen so far is we have like a carbon, carbon double bond, maybe followed by a single bond or a, car, a nitrogen double bond. But this one has a double bond followed by a double bond. So it's a unique situation. We got to figure out what the heck is going on and is, is this even possible? The next, there's also another molecule that's really similar that we want to talk Ooh. about. Azide is a very cool molecule that looks like alene, but it's really complicated, mm -hmm. which you'll see. Okay. But we wanted to kind of compare and contrast these two molecules. So you can kind of still apply what we talked in the previous video for these exam level problems, but still kind of, um, yeah, see the difference and kind of just sail through. Yeah. It's going to be a little rocky. I like that. I like that. What's the hybridization of the carbon atom oil on the right? I knew you were going to ask me that yeah. one. If we use your super cool formula, which I think is awesome, is SP3 minus max number of pi, see max, I remember this time, max number of pi bonds. Then in this case, the one all the way on the right, Looks like it has mm -hmm. one pi bond, so I'm gonna say SP2. Yeah, this one right here, all the way on the right. Yeah, all the way on Got the right, yes. All right, so it's SP2. What about the central carbon, this one right here? Ooh, so this one's a little weird because it looks like there's a double bond on one side, double bond on the other yeah. side. But still, if mm -hmm. I stick to your formula, which has been doing me right, is it SP3 minus two mm. max pi bonds, which should be SP. Mm, yeah, exactly. And then we, we do need to do a check because we saw we the do. secret resonance happening in the last problem with diazomethane. Yes. Um, so let's analyze this left carbon real quick, and then we will do the checkeroo, okay? So what about this yeah. one? SP yeah. what? I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going to say SP2. SP2, one pi bond. Yeah. I like that. So SP2. Wait, isn't the top, isn't the top one SP? <clears throat> What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. Hold on. Let me see. Let me check here. Let me see. Oh, yeah, it's fine. I just have my glasses on. It's good. All right, so resonance, Jason. Can this pi bond on the right resonate left? Go right here to, you know, create a resonance structure and change the hybridization of this carbon or this carbon. So, you know, I'm actually going to draw it out so they can see what I'm saying. So, like, mm -hmm. essentially that. Can that go there and create a triple? I mean, the arrow looks good. But the arrow looks pretty good, right? Yeah, it's the like arrow looks arrow. awesome. Like, like all, it, like, all it, my That's drums. what I'm saying. The arrow itself yeah. is magnificent. But the problem, uh -huh. I think, is that carbon's going to explode. Why? Because it, it has looks pretty happy. Bonds. Got all How many bonds yeah. is that? I think, I think we've got five bonds, which exceeds the octet, which now has 10 electrons. Uh, so it's a Texas carbon. Yes. yes. Very big. So you guys might hear uh, pentavalent carbon. A lot of yes. prospects use that term. Pentavalent. Ooh, that's a good one. Bam. <clears throat> Dropping it. I like it. Knowledge. Yeah, so this, this, this is no good. Uh, it's got way too no many points, no. like Jason said. So this, this structure here, it, that's not a valid resonance structure. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about any secretive resonances. We <laughs> don't even need to worry about any secret resonance structure. This yeah. carbon's SP2. This is SP. This is SP2. There's no other possible resonances, mm -hmm. right? Azide, though, on the other hand, it's really similar. You have this double pi bond situation going on there. You have three atoms. But because they have lone pairs, you guys are going to see later on, that, that's yes. uh, complicated. There's definitely some resonance roof happening. A swoosh, that's right. Classic Jason sound effect. A swoosh. We're <laughs> yes. going to draw the molecular orbitals yes. in their 3D form. 
not molecular orbital diagrams. <laughs> they know yeah. now because it's SP2, one of the PY orbitals has to be used to set it up on these two carbons here on the middle and the right. Yes. Um, we're not starting with the left for a reason you, you'll see later, but nice. How that could show up on the Yeah, those are good. Okay. Those are those are not perfect. They're good. <laughs> They're just good. <laughs> Excellent, Jason. Can you skadoosh the purple electrons into those PY orbitals? Yes, I can. Here we go. Perfect. Skadoosh, skadoosh. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Are you gonna do the swoosh? What is it? Swoosh swoosh? I can't remember your noise. Uh, what is it? Whoosh. whoosh. There it's a whoosh. There we go. Yes. So next, Jason, we gotta do the P Z orbitals because this on the same yeah, why is it yeah yeah so like actually question why do we have to do pz orbitals for like these two carbons why can't we do py py because orbital with two electrons here we can't jam another orbital in the same thing so we have to go skadoosh and go 90 degrees so we can make sure all the electrons are happy bam bam, bam. there we go and then i'm gonna go ahead and label our orbitals here's your alien guys and at this point you guys have graduated mm -hmm. so you guys can handle the pi system or pi network with the sigma network combined with it so we separated for you for diazomethane yeah and there you go you just conquered your exam question yeah easy yeah. peasy lemon squeezy yeah. mm -hmm. jk we saw the sigma network <laughs> yeah oh yeah Good about yeah that. all right <laughs> and we're gonna drop it in now together this carbon it's sp2 hybridized right this yes SP2 that is hybridized i'm i'm staying with my answer sp2 mm -hmm. okay so then it has to have a sp2 yeah. orbital that reaches out to the hydrogen to yeah. this hydrogen and to the left carbon uh -huh. yeah yes okay. why did you wedge and dash like this carbon's h's the bond for the h hoping you are why, why are they going to settle on the exam <laughs> <laughs> now because kind of for the same reason we've got look at i mean look at this we have this we have this red p orbital we have this blue p yeah. orbital we have these other yeah. things so we have to make sure that all the arrangement works so it's kind of that 90 degrees so if we have a pi bond here in order to get other electrons we have to turn it sideways so it's kind of like we have a pi bond followed by a pi bond followed by then we've got these other orbitals so we have to make sure that we've it's the bond angles it's the electrons mm -hmm. in the right space i think it's called vesper theory yeah, excellent yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm going to purposely draw our oh, that's a good idea first yeah. sp2 orbital here it's a, it's like a little bit dashed so mm -hmm. that's the first sp2 orbital i'm gonna i'm gonna pop an electron in there and since it's a sigma network i'm just gonna use black to make uh the contrast yeah, a more clear i think that's a good idea electron. and then it, the uh i think jason did this in video one this orbital is kind of well yeah kind of coming out more at us yeah this is still nice. an sp2 good. orbital and then i'll pop our hydrogen here nice and big like that bam and then i'll pop in a smaller hydrogen here because it's in the back sweet yeah very so nice, i hope friend. you guys get that um we'll drop in another image in a little bit to help you visualize that all right and then the third sp2 orbital is going to be over here coming out which mm -hmm. the central carbon is going to have an orbital coming to the right to meet it but is that central carbon going to have an sp2 orbital as well going to the right to meet up with it here i yeah. think the front the middle one is going to have because we already said it was sp right uh -huh. so we're gonna have an sp, SP in the middle. yeah so it's yeah. gonna exactly so it's, here we go guys it's gonna look a little ugly because we have to overlap everything but yeah. it's gonna have an sp orbital coming out like that with an electron in there as well for that bond to form nice mm -hmm. and then it's therefore it needs another sp orbital coming out here mm -hmm. towards the left Bam. so it can bond with the left carbon that's right here mm -hmm. okay all right and then jason why don't we have wedges and dashes here on the left carbon yeah this is bonds. great because you can see what's really cool about the system when you look at it constant alternates it's like hydrogens red p blue p and then the hydrogens again just once again to maintain that we've got all of those uh spacing or the the correct distance these 90 degree angles between all the orbitals so these are going to be straight up into kind of out to the side so it's just going to be up here yeah that's good straight out to the side okay. is good yeah all right and then we got our h and we have our h yeah. and then we have our mm -hmm. electron and our electron and our electron and our electron <laughs> yeah well we we got, hold on this, this is what we need to, I, I was just about to say the same thing we Sorry. need that one Ooh, that's the reflex again it. yeah there you go yeah so this is our sigma network in black and this is our pi system in our our red and blue over here as you can see there's really cool like um molecular geometry that you can kind of visualize kind of here cool. yeah and so the essential carbon is sp hybridized it's going to be linear the outer carbons are sp2 hybridized which is why they're trigonal planar so if you can yeah. see that it's kind of like trigonal planar 120 degrees behind between the uh bonds and same with this one 120 120 120. sweet yeah. 
All right, and next, we're gonna, just in case that's kind of, uh, they can't really <laughs> visualize it, we're gonna drop in some cool chem draw stuff that Jason created, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, Jason, so yeah, what's going on here? Is, so yeah. if you look at the outline that we just drew, you'll notice mm -hmm. that the blue P orbitals are kind of slightly skewed to the side. And we did that so you can kind of see them, but what, yeah, thanks, Frank. What we did below with the chem draws is we took them and we want to make them face on because if you were looking at the molecule the way that we've drawn it up top, those blue orbitals would really be coming right at your eyes in your face. So that's what they would look like from the top. But then the, the red P orbitals would be straight up and down like the way we've drawn them. So when we overlaid them in the third structure that Frank's going to point to, you'll notice that's what they would look like if you didn't have your blue ones skewed kind of like we did up top. So it's kind of a more mm -hmm. accurate representation of what they would visually look like if you could actually see them with your eyes. I don't think exactly. Can, yeah. And on the exam, you'll probably be asked to just draw it more like this. Uh, just yes, so you, definitely. Yeah, just so you got it. But we wanted to show you this so you know like what's actually happening. Because mm -hmm. later on, when it comes to like more complicated problems involving like resonance in rings, you know, it gets kind of more complicated. You kind of have to understand the orthogonal 90 degree relationship yeah. between the PZ Ooh, big term. and PY orbit. Yeah. Um, orbital yeah anyway in this one we don't really need this we just dropped it in here for yeah so i think yeah i think that was just to show yeah. them that the fact that some hydrogens are straight up straight down some are kind of dashed but you, yeah you're right we don't oh really yes yes it, that's so. right yeah that's right okay here you go jason azide what is the hybridization of this nitrogen atom on the right sp3 minus max number of pi bonds where's you i see one i know all right so this one yeah i, I wrote the sp for you this one is sp what jason I'm going to say, because now, just like the one right above it, Aline, I think there's mm -hmm. two double, so three minus two uh, is one, so SP. Three minus two, all right, so I'll write it down. Three minus two, so you SP, yeah. okay. And I'm going to say the one on the left, Frank, I I'm going out yeah. on a limb here, and I hope I'm not yeah. making a massive mistake, but I think it's still also SP2. SP2, because it has one pi bond, right? One pi bond, yeah. Yeah, so this one, I'm going to yes. save the math part and just draw it out for you guys. And I'm going to use the highlighter. Here we go. So guys, um, plot twist. Remember how we said this one's really complicated? So some of these are not quite right because what we said earlier, you have to look up yeah. the resonance. And me and Jason kind of know that like, when we see this, like an alarm, <laughs> yeah. So when we see lone pairs and pi bonds, that's like, boom, we, we know something fishy is happening. Yes. Our, your professor's trying to trick us. Let's start with the left nitrogen. Can it resonate, that lone pair? Yeah. I think we can, because if, if I'm thinking about this correctly, I think we can take those lone pairs and we can mm -hmm. skadoosh them in the middle. 